want to welcome each one of you. This is the second episode with Dr. Prema Dandraj and the Dandraj family were members, very senior members of the Richmond Town Methodist Church, where I also had the privilege of being the pastor. And if you've not seen the first episode where I, uh, we have given this interview, I would encourage you to see that. Dr. Prima, we're so glad that you're here and just a joy to hear your testimony. Dr. My pleasure, Pastor. And you were saying that, you know, when after you had this accident and this terrible incident that happened in your life, one of the persons who was a great help and encouragement to you is your mother. Yes. And uh, could you tell us more about your mother and the advice that she had given you? My mom actually was a very strong person and she was very supportive and um, very wise advice all the time. You know, if I do something, she'll say exactly what, um, you know, what um, encouragement she has to give, she would give me. And the first thing she taught me was 5H. Hmm. She said, first, be holy. Be holy. Hard work. Hard work. Honesty. Honesty. Humble. Humble. Humane. Humane. All this will give you happiness. Wow. This will lead to happiness. So she said, if you follow that, she said, irrespective of, you know, where you come back, how much you study, what money you have, all that will not be of any use if you are arrogant. Okay. So your attitude makes a lot of difference. So she says, always be humble and always love both, all four of us, love each other. Even if one becomes very rich and one has studied too much, she's, she would say that love and affection and humbleness is what will carry you through throughout your life. In other words, so, what you're saying, doctor, is this that um, no matter what your background is, yeah. what kind of family you had yeah. or you didn't have mm. or what poverty you lived under and all that. But if you follow these five principles in your yeah, life enough. and you have God in your life, life yeah. you're going to come up in life. First God only. You know, First you God. have to be holy. You have to look up to him. See, there are two different types of uh, Christians. One who will, very like fanatic types, very difficult for them because they'll say, God said, oh, we cannot have surgery, we cannot have blood transfusion. I've not seen take that. Medicine, yeah, not take, take medicine. medicine. God himself treated so many. So he has never said no to any of us. I mm. think they should not do such things to their life. There are extreme cases yeah, like extreme that. Extreme, they should not. But even if, you know, if they... Um, of course, there are some lukewarm. We can always bring them out. Okay. They can always come back to God. And one or two instances when happens to them, when they look up to God, they themselves will know that with God, they can, the whole richness they can achieve. Amen. You know, Amen. because there is um, beauty, of course, is important. I'm not saying that everybody should be ugly like me. Everybody you are ugly, doctor. Good. May I say that? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that. Beautiful. <laughs> so, but um, whatever problems they have, face the problem. Amen. Face it with a smile and the problem will get solved. No, God has never said that I give you a problem and it will be there permanent for you. No, he has said again and again in the Bible that it will be solved. You just have to have patience for it. You know, like grass may dry, the flowers may fall, but the word of the Lord, Lord. will always be there. And if, so and if he has said that, it is you true. Know, you know, uh, you are about eight years this ha when this fire yes, yes. And those three years you struggle from one doctor to another to surgery and medicine and all. Same of doctor, Velour. Like, oh, oh. And I can't even imagine you. Were, your lip was actually stuck to your chest, chest. actually. Yes, and yes. your whole face was burned. See, I could not lift, no? When it is like that, I and cannot see this and I cannot see. see. I can only see this. I can't see. I must tell you a very funny incident. Dr. Elvim Joseph, I must bring him into this. He was a doctor. He was, you know, the minute I went to LO, first thing they did, actually, I had very long hair. First thing they did is they shaved me because oh, I was no. so tiny, you know. They mummified me. I was crying saying, no, 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 I cannot give my hair. You cannot shave. So, they just put a bed sheet and mummified me. Oh my God. I can't move my hands. I can't do it. They shaved. I said, who is this which doctor told you to shave? And they said, this is Dr. Elbim. I said, who is that Elbim? <laughs> Let him come. So I was fighting with the nurses. Then they said that he'll be coming for rounds. Mm -hmm. So I was, I'm lying in the first bed and I'm, I can't see. No, I'm in the side turning. 
and I can see a tall man, very huge, very tall. He was some six above, six point two or whatever. Hefty man. And those days in Velo, a whole lot of nurses and medical students and all will come behind the doctor for rounds. When I looked at him, I said, my gigantic. I was crying. I just stared at him. I stopped crying because I was shocked to see. I said, I'm so tiny. What will I fight with him? Because I was telling, I'm going to fight with the doctor who asked you to do. So he came. Then he made me to lie down straight. I was straight. Then he asked me, why are you crying? I said, my hair. He said, oh, don't cry. I will give you my hair, he said. So I believed. How will I know? <laughs> then he went for rounds. He went. Then I looked at him and he's bald. <laughs> he's totally <laughs> bald. What hair he'll give me? So again, I started crying. See, but at that moment, he made me so happy. Wonderful. All the Wonderful. And that's amazing. So if somebody at that time told you that one day you will come back to the same hospital and you become a spastic surgeon, you wouldn't have believed it. No, I won't. We, even my mom, you know, no, every time in those three years, the doctor will be sitting inside. Then I will be, me and my mother will be sitting. So one day my mom said, uh, uh, Prima, I want to see you sit there where your boss is sitting. Mm. I said, Ma, I didn't even pass fifth standard. I said, what are you asking me to go sit there? I said, do you know how many things I have to study to become a doctor and sit there? So she says, I know. That's all. You know her, um, I don't know what faith she had in God and that she knew that I will become a doctor. Yeah. How she knew with only my fifth standard, not even fifth pass, I really don't know. But she was so confident that I will sit. And you won't believe I sat in the same chair in wow, CMC where Lord. my boss sat. And I became the head of the department in the same department where I was a patient. I used to wait outside for the doctors to call me. And then I started calling patients sitting in that chair. So isn't that amazing yeah. the way I, God has brought absolutely. me out? Absolutely. You know, I always say this, doctor. We are not a victim of our past. In Christ, we can be a victor. We are. I always think I'm not a victim. I am a victor only. Amazing. You know, no and weapon formed against you will prosper, he said. No. Amen. So whatever people said when I joined CMC, all the CMC, because I'm not CMC, I don't know. No, you I am from Hubli. So and those days for uh, to enter CMC, you know, you have to be a CMC. I know. Non CMC. See, I they had very little chance. So everybody will say, Prima, don't study, yeah, you won't get. I had to study to become MS General Surgery. So I came, you know, so the same doctor, Dr. L.V.M. Joseph, I, I finished my medicine in Hubli. Then after five and a half years, I wrote a letter to him saying, uh, I said, uh, sir, do you remember me? I am your old patient. Okay. I would now want to fulfill my mother's wish. I want to become a doctor in CMC Velo. Okay. Can you give me an internship? Okay. So then he wrote to me, yeah, please come. Because even then he didn't know me. He would have forgotten. So many patients yeah. are there, you know. So he forgot. So I came, um, came, and I was waiting. He had, he was a director at that time. So I came and I was waiting outside. Then I saw him. He said, "Prima, you've become a doctor. You're my tiny patient." He said, this is the first time my patient becoming a doctor wow, like this amazing. and coming and asking me for help. He said, definitely, but I will only put you into CMC, but studying and coming up and all is in your hands. Nobody can help you. Wonderful. I said, fair enough, sir. Wonderful. I said, I will not come to your office at all till I pass and only then I will come. Yeah. With a box of sweets. <laughs> That's it. I never went to him because people should not say, oh, she went to the director and she got she favor, know. all I that. Know. I didn't want anybody to do. I said, Lord, you are there. You guide me and my hard work. One I work. will do what I can, but you do what I can't do. Amen. And you give me, help me to get through. And um, the exams came. I passed. I got that, you know, entrance exam. I was selected, I was on the board, only six people they'll select, out of I don't know so many will apply. So we were only six selection for MS. So and I was in this one of the six. So people who told me you won't get, they put their head down and walked. Hmm. Whereas I said, thank you Lord, you didn't make me to fall, you know. I mean, didn't, I, I was, I'm not ashamed, uh, I didn't go, have to go through this. 
shame in front of the people who told me that I won't get in. You have given me the confidence that I've got the seat. I can now walk with pride that knowing that you are with me Praise and God. nothing is impossible. Praise Maybe God. CMC had a rule that non-CMC it's cannot get in. And I, too, I got into general surgery where women were not encouraged at all. Mm. So every way or every step of my life, God has been with me, Wonderful. guided me, led me, proved to me that he is with me and nobody can touch me, you know. Praise so whatever God. people said, exactly opposite what God wanted me to do, that he led me that way. And so you have learned one lesson. What other people think about you is not important. Not important at and all. What God thinks about you Correct. and what you believe about Correct. yourself Correct. is so See, important. Actually, so no. you finished your MBBS, then you finished your master's MS. in MS. Then, and then, what, then what happened, I'll tell you. Now I dis I told um, the director that I will come with a box of sweets. Mm. So I took the box of sweets and I went to his office. He was still the director. And um, I said, sir, I passed. He said, no, 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 you don't give me the box of sweets. I will give you the boxes. I said, why so? He says, while you were writing the exams and while you finished and were waiting, I already called Ludhiana so that you will go there to do your MCH. Now start packing and go to MCH to Wonderful. become a plastic surgeon. Just see how God put it into him and he remembered it. Because I never met the director till I promised him that I won't come. For any help, I, I took. So he gave me that box of sweets and he said, another one month, be ready to go to Ludhiana. Wow. And there you work for six months and again you will have an entrance exam. You write the exam, then they will select who will get into plastic, plastic surgery. surgery. Only one seat. So I said, okay, sir. So I came and told my parents, you know, I was so happy. I said, uh, Dr. LBM said that I have to go. My father said, no. You are not okay. going to Ludhiana so, because the war was there, Pakistan okay, and India okay, war in 1986. Okay, okay. My dad said, no, you can't go. My mother said, no, her mission is that God has chosen her to do this. No, no bomb will come near her. Fantastic. She has to go. Wow. You know, what, uh, what uh, faith, car faith um, my mother confident. had, I can't tell you. So I went to Ludhiana, my brother came. He came with me, uh, we, we flew from here to Delhi and from Delhi we took uh, the singer train. We went to Ludhiana and my brother went and got all the bed and the clothes and you know everything what all he had mean. to do, everything. He set it all for me. In two days time he came back and I stayed there and uh, worked. And uh, there were already uh, some six or seven people from Ludhiana who were applying for plastic surgery. Okay. So I, every day I will go and I'll pray to God. I say, Lord, this is your wish that I have to become a plastic surgeon. I have to treat burn patients. So you guide me, you lead me, you get help me to study in such a way that when the questions come, you will teach me what I have to answer. Wonderful. And I, they did it and I topped it. Wow. All those Ludhiana fellows were so angry with me. She, they said, she's come from somewhere from Vellur and we are from Ludhiana and we didn't get and she got and all. I thanked God. I know how I got it. I know yes. God is with me. Amen. So with God with me, no, I could do anything. The impossible and all I could do. Amen. All these are impossible. For me to get into CMC, well, it was impossible. Because everybody said I won't get in. You're but, an outsider at that time. Yeah, I'm an outsider. And then you go to Ludhiana yeah. again. You're an again, outsider. I'm an outsider. <laughs> so, but then, that's why I said, if only people cling to God, you, they can achieve everything. All they have to do is just trust Him. He's not asking you to give anything. He doesn't expect anything from us. Just that little trust. Trust Him and He'll, he'll pour you. You know, he, he says, you know, just taste me and see. See, I'm good. You know? I always say this, doctor, that the main thing in life is that you need to have a desire to bless people. You need to have a passion to bless people and the resources that you need for that God himself will provide yeah here yeah. you are you want to help people who have had burnt injuries and all that and then God we allowed you to do the best get the best training available to bless people correct correct because Ludhiana was the best plastic surgery training and my boss was also very fond of me and he'll tell me Prima he'll sit in the lounge and he'll Prima go 
चलो आप ऑपरेशन करो सो आई एस टू रीड आई एस टू डिपेंड सो मच ऑन गॉड बिकॉज एवरी केस यू नो आई वॉन्ट टू गिव माई बेस्ट आई प्रे एंड आई से लॉर्ड यू डू द सर्जरी आई एम आई विल ओनली असिस्ट यू बट यू विल हैव टू टेक द नाइफ फ्रॉम मी एंड शो मी वेर यू वोट बिलीव मी पास्टर नॉट इवन वन पेशेंट हैज डाइड इन माई हैंड एक्सेप्ट फॉर वेरी सिवियर बर्नस दैट आई कॉन्ट हेल्प बट अपार्ट फ्रॉम दैट नो कॉम्प्लिकेशंस नो डेथ यू नो टूडे वेन आई लुक बैक आई थिंक माई गॉश हम मच गॉड हैज ब्लेस्ड मी एवरी लिटल थिंग आई आस्ट He has given me. There is nothing that God has not given me. You know. In fact, He has given me more than what I could. There are many times I say my cup overfloweth. I am unable to contain it. You were you telling know? us at the break that um, at one time you and your cousin were laughing and joking and going on commercial. Yeah, 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 yeah. So like yeah, that. I met uh, one girl and she actually. Uh, she was very surprised she was coming from the opposite side and me and my sister in law we were walking like that we were having ice cream in mg road and uh, then we were laughing for something i don't know why we were laughing that girl came suddenly and she said um, i'm seeing that you're so happy and you're laughing so much she said but your whole face is burnt how can you be so happy she asked me i said why She said, "Look at my nose. I have such big nose, and I'm so unhappy about it." I said, "I'll fix it for you." <laughs> She was so surprised. <laughs> She looked at me. She thought maybe I'm mad. I told her, "No, I'm a plastic surgeon, and um, I'm working in CMC." Well, oh, I said, uh, "I can do a good job of your nose." She took my address and all that. After 15 days, she came to my house with a full crew. she took a uh, you know video of me and she wrote a beautiful article about me in uh, savvy magazine wonderful. you know uh, and she was the editor of times of india at that time wonderful so it's she- so beautifully she wrote and then she asked me i said why you are not married i felt that i i had to do my goal my goal was something and my passion was to go towards it I had no time for thinking of all Wonderful. this. Wonderful. Then she said, um, "Have you ever fallen in love?" I said, "I didn't fall, but one guy fell in love with me in America. You know, okay. when I was in America. Okay. But of course, you know, I, I, my goal was always to do work so, for patients. So yeah. I never fell for it. Then I told him, "I'll go when I go back to India. If I still think that I miss you, I will come back." Wonderful. But I never missed him. Because I was so busy with the Zagni Raksha, you know, I just started after going to USA. Okay. But that money I got, okay. I started. So I did not miss him at all. Wonderful. But we're good friends, Wonderful. distant friends, Very you know. Good. So then she she wrote that that she's not married and all in that. You won't believe me. They got so I got some hundred letters, you know, from different countries after reading that survey. <laughs> that they want to get married to me and i was thinking i don't <laughs> i don't even know who this guy is and all sorts of stuff i tell my secretary just throw it here in the dustbin i said i don't even want to read it One i said thing. so see again that that guy from america he is the top plastic surgeon very rich guy his house is like one big mansion no people can say no oh because of a look she didn't get anybody but god gave me the best fellow mm-hmm. the top plastic surgeon in the world and uh, but still of course my ambition was different my goal was different mm-hmm. i was not the type for marrying and settling mm-hmm. so but at least in my mind he gave me like nobody else can tell oh because of her looks you know she mm-hmm. didn't get anybody really? it's not that and i got the most very wonderful guy wonderful, very nice guy wonderful. the top plastic surgeon so see where god never kept a uh, anything Like. Uh, hidden from me he gave mm. me all the gifts amen my box i think must be now full, empty oh, with him amen. because he's given it all to me you know so i actually i love my life wonderful because god has done so much of course we have lot of challenges of course outside yeah. challenges are plenty mm. but if you listen here and let go like my mother told me mm. they will not help you when you have problems mm. so if you think that you are and actually i started loving myself loving my character amen and that is so important see when you believe in god 
And when God is doing everything for you, the looks doesn't come into the picture at all. Amen. Now, whether you like me or not, who cares? Because I am going my way and I am reaching my goal. My goal is that and my aim is that to reach that. Now, what other people say makes no difference to Absolutely. me. Because uh, as if he is going to, you know, Absolutely. as if he is my relative or somebody to like me. Not at all. So, if everybody realizes in this world that what they are, it is God-given. Accept that. And what they are good at, pursue that. Yeah. Pursue and have passion for what you do. Yes. You know, in the three years when I stayed at home, my mother never allowed me to sit and think of my looks. Mm. She, I learned cooking, knitting, crochet, embroidery, painting, wow. gardening. Wow. You name it, I can do it, Pastor. Wonderful. I am a jack of all. I won't say I am master of everything. And you played the guitar? And I played, I learnt it when I was 40 years, I called a guy to come home. I learnt guitar, I learnt uh, piano. Wow. And I thought, why? There is no age bar for learning. Amen. Now, I wanted to be a singer, of course, I can't sing soprano. Because in the olden days when the phone was there, you know, when I say hello, somebody will say, Yes, sir. <laughs> Once you get so upset, my voice is so bad that people are calling me, yes, sir. But, it was an advantage for me because when I take lectures, all my students are very attentive okay. because my voice is so loud and so clear. And uh, when I call the railway station to book the tickets, they'll say, yes, sir, yes, sir, you sent somebody. Whereas my classmates, when they call, no, even the lab, when they call for result, they'll say, madam, come after 20 minutes. <laughs> but for me, they'll say, yes, sir, there yes, sir. Go. So I used to laugh and say, wow, my voice, although it is bad, although it's a manly voice, still advantages are many. Amen. I got, so everything when you take it positive, no, Pastor. Amen. If I had cried, oh, you know, my voice is like that, I am like this, I, my looks are so terrible, others are so beautiful. Amen. I don't think I would have come up in life so much. Amen. You know, one thing I have learned, Doctor, in life, you're not going to get everything. There will be one lack of something. Like in case you didn't get married, you're okay with that. Your skin, you had this burning, you're okay with that. And in life, learning to accept this kind of disadvantages, tragedies in your life, and yet not to give up in life. Yes. It's yes, an amazing yes, lesson. It is. One thing that I want to ask you, doctor, is that um, when burnt patients come to you, and they see you, how do they relate and how was that as an encouragement to them? They are all so happy to see me sit in this position on the side of the table mm. and talk to them because they think that they also can become like me. Yeah, Many yeah. children, they'll say, what age you were burnt doctor? They'll ask me, I say eight. They'll say, I am also eight. Can I become a doctor like you? They'll ask me. I'll say, of course you can become. You know, they actually look at another person. When you're, I feel in my mind that when somebody is depressed, let's say a burn patient is depressed. Now she meets another burn victim like me, a burn survivor. I'm not a victim, I'm a survivor. survivor. So when she meets another burn survivor, there is uh, so much of joy in them because they think, okay, I can also become like her. Wonderful. I can also look like her. You know, mm. and uh, there are many children who have asked me, can I also become a doctor like you? I said, absolutely. I said, you just have to have your goal. I said, you work towards your goal and you will achieve much more bigger than me. You will become even my director and I will be working under you. I'll tell they all will have yeah. such joy. If you see my organization, Agni Daksha, you know, burn survivors are our uh, staff. Ooh. Because I make sure that they are the ones who are there so that they will understand the problems of another burn victim. So many of our staff are burn survivors. Mm. And so when they see there is passion, there is a ca compassion for them. So they treat the burn victims very nicely, very slowly they'll remove the dressings because they know what pain they had through. when they had. So all this makes actually Agni Daksha such a unique organization where not only we go out of the way to treat them and counsel them, give them skill training program, give holistic family, uh, you know, families are united and then we put the children in schools and then we train something, give them skill training, occasional training and send them out as an independent individual who is, you know, independent. 
Wow. Not dependent on their husbands anymore because they are working and they're getting the money. Wonderful. So you know, so it is a complete package for them when they come, mm -hmm. and we are so happy that we can do it. We can reach out to all the as many as we can um, with whatever resources we have. I'm Wonderful. not going to crib about it. So we are uh, we happy Wonderful. doing that for them. So they're very happy seeing, looking at me. So they always say the director herself is burnt victim, I mean survivor. So we also should be happy and they always tell me, you're so happy. You, when you come, you make the whole place, you know, because I talk a lot. So my non-stop, <laughs> sorry. I do. So, yeah. So. And so what you're saying is that, you know, yeah, when you have a passion for what you have, yeah. Yeah. And when, you know, you were earlier saying that, how, how, you were saying, God has a purpose. Yes. And whatever happens in our life, God can make something beautiful out of that. Yes. And did mommy get to see you becoming a doctor? You know, my mom, it was only one more year that I, but she already knew I am because I was an associate professor. So at that time when she passed away, uh, she passed away a sudden heart, massive heart attack. So, but then my daddy saw me sit there. Wow. My daddy was there two years after my mother passed Amazing. away. So he saw me sit. But I'm sure my mother is watching me from there. Because sure. I got so many awards, accolades and you know, I went to all over the, I've visited all over the world. I've trained students. Amazing. I've helped them set up the burn units. So, God has used me, my chilly father. Probably. And see, I, now I know what my mother said. Today you may not know why he chose you, but mm -hmm. the day will come when you know you, why he chose you. Mm -hmm. And um, there are many reasons for me to know why God chose me. Because I started the Agni Raksha, which is a unique organization. And then the way I went all over the world to train students, to teach them. And... Um, Wonderful life I've had. Professionally, I've achieved so much. Impressive. I have 10 degrees. Can you believe? With nothing. I was just only fifth with not even pass. And for me to do so much, you now without his help, uh, I always tell when I go to give lectures and all, I say, with God, I'm a hero. Without him, I'm a zero. Hallelujah. So, with so, that, we'll close this uh, episode. With God, you are a hero. Even though others think that you are a zero, God can make you a hero. Hallelujah.